Hi, I'm Brian Preary, tutoring high school chemistry. Today's topic is significant figures and calculations. Any calculation you perform in chemistry, you'll need to remember your significant figures. Your chemistry teacher will expect this of you, and if you don't, your answer could be as much as 3,000 degrees off. Unpleasant personal experience. If you want to review what significant figures are, we've got a lesson on that too, so you can head over there. You'll need it for this. Okay, whenever you do a multiplication or division or raise something to a power, remember, that's really just multiplication, you need to keep in mind this rule. R count the number of significant figures in each of the numbers you're multiplying or dividing by, and then round the answer to the lesser of those two. So let's say you've got 3.2, and you're multiplying by 0 0.2. Multiplying out gives us 0 0.64. But check your sig figs. 3.2 has only two sig figs. 0 0.2 has only one. Use the lesser of these. One's less than two. So round to only one significant figure, and you've got 0 0.6. Okay, something a bit bigger than that. Let's say you've got some gruesome numbers, like 256.00 times 3.15. Multiplying through will give you 519.68. Round to your significant figures. 256.00 is 5. 3.15 is 3. Round to three significant figures. Rounding up gives you 520. Now wait, that's actually only got two significant figures. That zero is not significant because there's no decimal point. Well, there are two ways to remedy this. Either you put a small decimal point here, or preferably write it in scientific notation, 5.20 times 10 to the second power. You see, writing it like this leaves that decimal point at the end, and it's not as likely to be noticed as when it's in the middle here in scientific notation. So when in doubt, scientific notation. One last odd instance that could happen when you're doing multiplication and division. Let's say you've got 10.0 times 0 0.20. 10.0 has three significant figures. 0 0.20 has two. So you want your answer to have two significant figures. But multiplying through will give you a two. That's only one significant figure. If you don't have enough significant figures in your answer, you can add them on by putting on an extra zero. 2.0, that's two significant figures, and you're good. Moving on to addition and subtraction. It's similar to the above. Just count the number of places after the decimal in each of the numbers you're adding or subtracting, and then round your answer to the less of those. So let's say you've got 10.5679, and you're adding 2.568. Adding it up will give you 13.1359. Count the number of places after the decimal. 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 for this one, and 1, 2, 3 for this one. Take the lesser, the 3, and so round to that many places after the decimal in your answer. Doing that will give you 13.136. Okay, now one last example that will combine all of these rules. 10.58 plus 6.0 over 3.6. Well, order of operations, division comes first. 6.0 over 3.6 will give you 1.6 repeater. Keep sig figs in mind. 6.0 is two significant figures. 3.6 is two significant figures. Easy. Round to two significant figures and you'll get 1.7. Check the number of significant figures at the end of each of your steps. You're left with 10.58 plus 1.7. That gives you 12.28. Again, check your sig figs. Two places after the decimal, one place after the decimal. So round it and you get 12.3. And that's all there is to it. To recap, significant figures always use them in calculations. And with multiplication and division, count the number of significant figures in each number you're multiplying or dividing by, and round your answer to the lesser of those two, or three, or even four. Addition or subtraction, count the number placed after the decimal in each number you're adding or subtracting, then round your answer to the le least of those. That's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Preer. See you next time.